All right. All right. So hello, everybody. Welcome to Don't Even Think About It, Dog. Welcome to Science Sunday. Uh, today is the 8th of September, 2019. I am your host, Annie Wilson. And as always, I am joined by my menagerie of critters. There are two dogs and a cat. The cat sounds like a baby. There is no baby in the house. I gave him milk before we started. Let's see if this keeps him appeased. I'm not counting on it. So, after uh, many Sundays of marking Bennu and then not being here and then marking the moon, um, we're back to, you know, doing the, the thing. You know, the thing with the thing that the thing. So, why do I hear beeping? The joys of being live, and my neighborhood doesn't know that I'm live. Um, so we're back to colorizing galaxies, and when we left off with this, um, I we worked on, okay, what layer should be what color, and I actually color-coded them with this neat thing. So we actually need to do a whole lot of stuff. Um, we need to, first of all, I'm just showing you the different layers and yes, that they are different. Um, I don't think I ever told this that it needed to be a certain color. Yeah, no, see, it still says it's in grayscale. So we need to first do image mode we're gonna do rgb color and do not merge the layers and now we now we can have color so yeah um yeah canada got hit by dorian but um not ohio so but, oh, but Parador says he's doing good. Uh, which spacecraft took this image? Probably Hubble, just looking at the uh, filter names. I think this was a Hubble image. I think this was a Hubble image. And literally the last time we did this, all we did was color code. You know, this goes with this, goes with this. So I'm just setting everything to screen, and I think we usually set it to opacity, let's do 50%. I can, I can adjust that later. Um, this is a composite. There are four layers right here on the side, and each one of these was taken by a different filter on the Hubble. And I know the last time we did this, which I know was forever and a half ago, and a lot of people are like, but but I want to know more. Um, oh, that's right. This bottom one has to be 100% and normal, I think. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, so... It is indeed a composite. Let's see if my trackball behaves, because the micro switches in my trackball are going out, um, which is very unfortunate. We can kind of do everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is we've set this from grayscale to RGB. I've set three of the four layers to screen opacity 50% just so colors can come through. And I'm actually, the first, very, very first thing we're going to do after all that is I'm going to save this. Oh my goodness, it has been over a month since we've worked on this. I'm surprised I remember what I'm doing. I'm really glad we color coded the, uh, what layer is what's supposed to be what because otherwise I would be like I don't know what I'm doing um and I think I can actually kind of tell which camera took this because there's a very faint line I don't know if I can oh it's still saving 
Gotta let it finish saving. Um, but there's a looks like there might be a very faint line, or it looks like uh, the images were already mosaicked in, which is fine. I would act I actually prefer when the images are already mosaic to get rid of that line, a mosaic and stack to get rid of that line because I don't like messing with that line. So, yeah. yeah. Climate change is doing a lot of interesting stuff to coastal communities. By interesting, I don't mean like good interesting, it's like bad interesting. Like uh, North Carolina, oh shoot, I can't remember the, Outer Banks, Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is essentially a strip of islands um, off of mainland. North Carolina, like, they always get hit bad by storms, and I'm always confused as to why people continue to still build. Like, the houses will get knocked down. They'll put in an insurance claim, and they'll build the houses back up. As to someone that's grown up in Ohio, this is just maddening to me. Like, why would you continue, other than it's beachfront property, and it's very valuable, like, why would you continue to rebuild there? Why not do, um, Hawaii did a thing where it got hit by, um, I'm thinking the mainland of, or not the mainland, the big island of Hawaii, you know, Hawaii proper, um, where a big storm came in, there were a whole bunch of buildings on the coast, all the buildings got knocked down, either the county of Hawaii or the state of Hawaii, because each island is a county in the state. That's just how they decided to break everything up. It's like, nobody's going to build where these houses were knocked down. We're just going to turn this into a park. And it's a very nice public space um, where you anybody can go and, you know, quite frankly, if a storm comes in, there's not a lot of, like, infrastructure damage to be done to the park. Um, nobody ends up homeless because the park is damaged. So, yeah, I just... Like, I always... When I learned about that, I was like, I like this. Um, but I never really understood everybody else and was just like, eh, we'll just, you know, keep it here. Like, no, just, just no. All right. So we want this. We're going to turn off all the other layers. Oh, maybe this wasn't the move for 50%. Look at me not remembering what I've done. Uh, YYZ says, like in Toronto after Hurricane Hazel in the 1950s, no more houses in ravines, now parks. Yeah. Uh, I th think there's other places where, like, along floodplains, these are, like, other countries, obviously, where they're, like, well, we're just going to turn this into grazing land. Oh, I forgot to click colorize. That that would be important. So we're just going to make this really red. We can adjust this later. I really... I'm at the point where I really just don't care right now. Um, Indonesia is moving its capital city. I mean, these are these are good moves to do. These are good moves to do. So turn that off. Yeah, I, I don't think 50% was the way to go with screen with the opacity. Um, New Orleans is a floodplain. All right, bye Wayne. Yeah, New Orleans is a floodplain and I remember being very, like, I understand. They don't, they don't want to move. This is their home. Da 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 da. Plus, it's exp it is expensive to rebuild, but I don't know. On one, on one hand, I'm like, this isn't any of my business. I'm not, you know, I don't live there. It's easy to say on the when you're on the outside to say move, versus when you're on the inside, be like, but this is our home, though. Um. It's still, I don't get it. I probably never will. 
across the, that were upset because they couldn't continue to live in their homes built at the top and bottom of the ridge that is the sit that is clay yeah 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 you you don't want to live on a bunch of clay clay is bad and yeah new orleans is below is um it's actually like part of the hollands below sea level For various reasons, people have decided that this is their home and they are staying there, and it is very difficult to move an entire city of people, especially that large, and when there's, you know, that much history behind it. So, yeah. I think it's easier to be like, oh, this is a, just a bunch of coastal homes. For the better of everybody, we'll move these few people. But when it's a lot of people, it's not as easy. So. Oh. Eric says, I live in Baton Rouge. If I could talk to, if I could talk my daughter-in-law to move, I'd be in Tennessee. last for another example of people being idiots for not a list of last part of me is like more words Kerbal oh yeah um, not climate change related but I remember Kerbal earlier said not climate change related but I remember the eruptions on Hawaii last year and people and the people living there were surprised that the active volcano was erupting, idiots. Yes, uh, it is a very, um, it is, it's, you, it's, it's an active volcano. Jandra uh, says, all along the east coast people have built on the sandbars. The bridges to these places are already getting underwater with the storm, storms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, turn on this one, give this one an adjustment layer. And the blacks are pretty much all black already, so I don't think there's a whole lot of other adjustments to be made. Q, saturation, colorize, which I know you guys can't see the windows that pop up and I don't understand why. Oops, no, cancel. Uh, image layer. New adjustment layer. There we go. View saturation. I have a feeling that if I captured this whole monitor instead of um, just the window, you would see more of the windows that pop up. There's a little sidebar here that you guys can't see. Which is very annoying to me. It's like, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I like that blue. It's dark, but it'll do. And now we'll turn all the other colors back on. And that's what we got. It's not pretty, but uh, that's what we got. So now the trick is, why do I have a error up here? So I think now the trick is going to be, hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, Turning is difficult, so I can't tell if it's my lemma or my learna. Hey. Is that how we thank people for following? Anyways, here's some Cheerios and make it rain! Oh shoot, that is kind of dark, isn't it? Alright, let's 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 get rid of that one. I think the... Um, dumped in a whole bunch of new music and because I've already had to hit down essentially down arrow for uh, don't ever play this again mm. 
Aw, that's actually kind of cool, YYZ. On Phillip Island, Australia, they moved an entire community, like they destroyed all the existing houses, etc., to help protect the penguin population at the beach. Now the penguins are thriving. See, now that's humans being awesome. That is humans being awesome. Alright, so we have a not very pretty image. For whatever reason. It's got color, but... Go ahead and save this because I don't think I have autosave turned on. I'll wait for it to save before I do anything else. And I think now the trick is going to be to get the black parts blacker. Is there a green layer? There is indeed a green layer, Veronica. It is kind of um, buried. It's the second to bottom layer. Um, the reds and the oranges are coming through really strong. So I'm going to have to like back those off a little bit. I don't know if I want to flatten the image and then muss with colors or if I want to muss with colors first. Muss with color balances and such first. Um, But we did turn, we did essentially turn a black and white image into something that has color. It just doesn't, it doesn't have a wide variety of color right now. And I don't, I don't know why it's taking so long to save, but it's taking a while to save. Okay, there we go. Now it's saved. Um, so let me turn off. So there's the blue and the green layers. And I add the orange and it's still mostly that. So when it's when I add the red, the red just seems to overpower everything. So this might actually be a case for let me turn down the opacity. And it's still <laughs> Are you done? No? Yes? Maybe? Dogs are like, I don't think we're done. Um, yeah, I can. Puck. Um, I think I can. And I think I can do that with levels and curves. It has literally been a minute since I've done this and I think I can actually turn down maybe this is also supposed to be screen oof <coughs> ah. <coughs> Tinkerbell why are you so loud Dogs have strong opinions on this. Um, see, because I never really kept track of, let's turn this back up. So how did this get to all greenish looking? All right, I feel like I screwed something up. So if I put it to normal, it pulls up the red. If I add it to hue or saturation, oh wait, color might actually be how I want to do this. Uh, where did I get the raw images for this? Um, I, I know it was like at least a month ago. So 
I would try HLA, that's Hubble Legacy Archive. I wonder if there's a HST. No, HLA. No, that's not a thing. All right, so somebody asked where I got the raw images from, and this is actually probably a good time to show where I got the raw images from. So let me muss with, um, let me muss with OBS for a second so I can show you where I got these raw images from. And it's gonna take me, here, have some dogs. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Full screen media, okay. So open another window and plop it over here. And then HLA, cause there's a couple different places, but I think I got it from HLA. Um, do, 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 do. Well, I tell it which window I want it to capture. There we go. Nope, not that. That's not what I want full screen. That's not what I want full screen. I feel like I need like five monitors. So this is HLA. And... Um, oh, they had an update in June. That's cool. So you just click enter site here. Um, and I think, hold on. So this is NGC, let me pull up chat just so I can type it in. NGC 7318. So we're gonna take that information we're gonna search for NGC, not V, 7318. And just do a search. And it pops up all of this stuff, right? And a lot of this is not very useful information. So we'll do images. And I have four images. Oh, thank you, Paranor. So I have four images, right? And this is, or maybe it's five. I think that, I think I may have deleted one. Oh no, wait, this is a combination image, which is why I don't have that one. Sorry, let me scroll through and try to tell you which images I downloaded. Um. So I have this one, this one, this one maybe, and this one. Let me, let me uh, switch back. Marty Demo asks, are all, Hubble te are all Hubble telescope images edited to look better? Yes. In fact, what you see on the screen right now, and these are the, um, let me see if I can just open one of these. Will it work? Kinda. Ah, oh, it's kinda working. Um. Let me zoom out. So this is just a grayscale image. Oops, that was too far. So I don't think this is actually one of the images I downloaded. So I think this was a mosaic. And I say that because there are lines, like kind of noisy lines right here and here. Um, so I think that's where images were actually overlapped. And there's a lot of noise, but these, this is all Hubble telescope images come down in grayscale, black and white. And that's just to capture the different uh, levels of light. And color is added later by the process that I'm doing now. And the reason why we can add color is, A, it's false color. I know, I know, I know. Um, a couple of weeks ago, which the video is probably not on, actually, it wouldn't have been a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, and the video is on YouTube, we went through which, um, how much light each filter captured. And the light that these 
filters captures sometimes beyond what our eyes can see because our eyes can see a very narrow bandwidth of or a very narrow amount like this would be the whole electromagnetic spectrum and our eyes can see like this much my pinky finger i'm i'm not joking it's very very what our eyes can see is very very limited and the monochromatic because they're only responding to light as kerbal said um, they are much more sensitive. They only have to measure one thing, light, that's it. They don't have to worry about what hue of light it is, da 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 da. It's, this is how much light is hitting the sensor. And with the different filters, we can just be like, okay, we only care about, instead of the whole electromagnetic spectrum, like, we only care about this much of the electromagnetic spectrum, um, being a much, much smaller amount. And some of these are really narrow filters where it's like, you know, pinky, some of these are really wide filters, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And the whole process of getting these images down, downloading the images and the images have to be, go through a process called drizzle, um, with drizzle pack, which I don't even know if that's in Pyraf instead of IRAF now, cause there's still there's two packages for dealing with um, a lot of astronomy data, and IRAF is the old one, which um, was essentially just cut off and killed. And PyRAF is the newer one that uses Python, but not all of the packages that were in IRAF are in PyRAF. And that's been problematic, and that's a whole nother video. Really, PyRAF versus IRAF is a whole other video, and I don't know a lot of it. Because I, quite frankly, started to work with IRAF and was like, nope, I'm done with this nonsense. Um, IRAF works best on Macintoshes and Linux, and I'm running a Windows system. So in order for me to get IRAF to work, I had to do a whole lot of extra, and it was, it was a headache. Uh, PyRAF is meant to be more like, oh, you happen to have a Windows system? Well now you can easily run Pyraf without setting up all these other things. But um, most astronomers use Macintoshes and Linux, and I now do own a Macintosh because Dr. Pamela is a, an amazing human being. Um, but all the things like stuff and things, yeah. So yeah so we're gonna close this but i think these were the images that i chose in fact let me flip back real quick where is it to photoshop and i have the um f814 wide I have the F665 narrow, F606 wide, and the F438 wide. And 483, 606, and 814, those are all wide filters. Those are very common in creating color Hubble telescope images. The 665 narrow is a little bit different. And let me pull that other thing back up real quick for you. And it looks like... Um, so here's 665. It looks like this is actually a combination of 665 and 657. This is 606. This is 438 and 418 wide. And I can't, these images are in a format called FITS. So you need yet another program called FITS Liberator to take these images from FITS format and put them into TIFF format, which I then import into Photoshop and start colorizing. And yeah, this, this is indeed the, um, the industry standard for colorizing these images is there, there are all these different steps and the difference between, you know, me doing it on stream and the professionals is a, the professionals usually have way more experience and practice and, um, B, they usually have more of an astronomy background and I know enough astronomy to be dangerous, but my background's really more in like computer science and 
public outreachy kind of things. I I can make tech work. I break it and then I fix it. Typically, I I break a lot of tech. Um, but yeah, I only do this on stream, which means, you know, you only see it, you only see it, you only see me working on it when I'm working on it. You don't, I don't do a lot of processing outside. I might do research outside of the streams, but I don't do any processing outside of the streams. And, um, yeah, which is both very awesome and frustrating because... If I do work on these images consistently week after week after week, I can get really fast. But the moment I take a couple weeks off is when I'm like, well, I forget what to do. Because I should have steps written down, but I don't have steps written down. And that's, it's just the nature of the thing. So, yeah. Hey, Noel. Um... <laughs> Sorry, they're just off camera and they're barking. So yeah, that's what's going on is that I have taken these grayscale images, downloaded them, and you can do this from home too. And you can get Fitz Liber Liberator. Fitz Liberator is free. The only paid part that I'm working with is um, Photoshop. You can do this in GIMP. I hate GIMP. I really, really hate GIMP. So I have opted to pay the 10 or $20 a month to have access to Photoshop. So there's that. Um, but yeah, you can do this at home. There are other people that just do this at home. There are people that add all sorts of, you know, there are people that go through these archives, realize that there's no good, quote, professional level images of these done and then just create the images and are like here world have some colorized data um, not all data can be colorized um, or if it can it needs a couple of special different things not all data that you look at is pretty and sometimes you get things like like this this is from an older I think this is an older camera where yeah when everything was put together, it was put together like this. This is not the greatest, but you know, people have managed to... I think the pillars of creation were taken with this camera. So, um, I think this is the mouse. And that one's kind of cut off. Um, I know there's some M101 data. There's going to be a lot of M101 data. And here with these lines, like in here, there's, um, let me actually just open this up so you can see. Are, are you not going to open it up more? Do I have to click more? I think I might have to click more. Nope. It doesn't want to do it. Anyways. Open a new tab. Aha, there we go. So this line that you see through the image is, it's here because this is uh, one exposure, essentially. And, excuse me, the line is called a chip gap. And it's literally, there's two um, CCD chips that are right next to each other. Hey, humans are talking. Have some Cheerios. It's called a chip gap and it's there on this exposure because it's only one exposure and it's literally just because two CCD chips are right next to each other, but um, it doesn't capture the information in between. So what, um, what people do, what astronomers do when they're putting in for these observations is that they'll take multiple exposures and then they'll stack the images to get rid of the chip gap. And you can kind of see that probably in this image. They're trying to get a very big image of um, M101. So let's give it a second to load. 
and they'll just take um, exposures of overlapping areas. So here, let me see if I can, here we go. So here, there would have been a chip gap and here you can see where there kind of was a chip gap, but because they have this other image behind it, um, overlapping that same area of space where that chip gap was, it, you know, essentially gets rid of the chip gap and you can see a very faint chip gap line here. The same thing. Um, they just literally collected more data to get rid of the chip gap. Uh, so these are what, this is a good example of what the raw images from Hubble look like. Like they don't come down in pretty color. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. I know that it was a little more technical than what you were maybe looking for. But yeah, that's, this is what raw Hubble images look like. Not anything at all like what we're working with. So let me flip over to the dogs so you can, you know, enjoy watching Tinker eat Cheerios. And I'm getting Cheerios in places I don't want Cheerios. That's fine. This always happens. And I am going to set everything back up. You're welcome, Eric. Um, I keep forgetting that not everybody has watched me do this like over and over and over again. So the reminders of, hey, what's going on are, are indeed helpful. Um, Cause I like, I kind of know what's going on, but I know a lot of you don't know what's going on. All right, so back to Photoshop. So now, now we got to figure, oh, thanks, Sully. And skip. And make it rain. Tinker's like, I'm not even going to wait for you to say anything, Mom. Oh, hey, Bill Nash. Can you get a shout out for Bill Nash? And make it rain. Subscribe for 11 months. Eric says, I have Photoshop. Guess what I'll be doing this evening? Happy Sunday! Happy Sunday to you! Um, yeah, and Eric, there's literally a whole, on our YouTube channel, there's a whole um, playlist of me starting from the very beginning. More bits! And speak! Ah! Good girl, Tinker! And make it rain! I guess I should make it sprinkled for Tinker. This pup's being a hog. They'll get it, they'll get it. Um, but there's a whole playlist that starts me doing this from, gosh, over a year ago now, um, doing this. And when I started, I would literally follow tutorials and just follow the tutorials on stream so you could all watch me. So you can watch me follow along in tutorials and work in GIMP to when I first make the switch from doing images on my own, I think also in GIMP, to I think I finally gave up and said, F it, I'm getting Photoshop. So that's where I'm at now. So yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Ooh, okay. No, 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 cancel. I probably should do a capture my whole screen instead of just the thing because there are windows popping up and I know you guys can't see what the windows are, are saying. So do color there and we'll do color on this one. So that, wow. Just changing the filter type really changed how the image looked, which I think is interesting. So, I want the black to be more black. We have color and I want the black to be more black. So I think that's going to be the next step today and possibly the last thing we do today. I, I feel like we both did and didn't do a lot of stuff today and that's okay, it's okay. So I'm just going to add another adjustment layer and this time I'm going to do F it, we'll do curves. Why, why are you not creating adjust? Oh, cause I'm not doing layer adjustment layer. That's why. This is very uh, frustrating that it just doesn't want to show you everything I'm doing. So use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. Boom, and I don't know what I have to do. Let's turn off all these other layers. 
So the black here, I think I can zoom in. So I'm trying to get the black that's like right here to be the same as the black. And your monitor might not show it, but mine does. That's not what I want to do. That's also not what I want to do. I think sample black point. That's not working. All right, let's just do RGB. Smooth that out. Sample, come on, sample black point. It is not at all doing what I want it to do. But that seems to work. There we go. Alright, so the black there is the same as the black. Our instro asks, are we trying to find what you want to do by process of elimination? Kind of. I mean, I know I want the black and the black part of the image to be the same as the... Oof. I'm just trying to zoom, yo. Um, be the same as the black around the edge. So I'm just gonna zoom in. See all that noise? Um... I think I forgot to get rid of the noise is a, something I think I forgot to do. But this actually gets rid of a decent amount of that noise, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So that works for me. Keeps a lot of the red. And I think if I want to try to make... No, that's not doing what I want it to do. So yeah, I think that did what I want it to do. And I know if I futz with, actually let me make sure that by doing this I'm not making everything really. I think I'm okay with that because it doesn't get rid of too much stuff. <sighs> if I do it that way, no, I don't want to do it that way. Wish it would just be like, yeah, here, do the thing. But it's like, nah, oh, it did do a thing. Okay. Perfect. That's actually way better than what I could have ever have hoped to do. All right, let me hit undo a gazillion times. No, no, oh no, I hit undo too many times. Redo blending change. <laughs> I hit I hit undo too many times. My dogs are like, what's wrong, mom? Are you okay? I'm like, yes, puppies, I'm okay. There we go. I think that's way uh, more, uh, way better than what I could do just by hand. And then to get the white point, we'll go here, which is not really what I wanted it to do. And a midpoint, it's like, nah. It's like, nah. You're in Kingston. Oh, good. Good luck seeing Kim and Kevin later. Astro YYZ says, the figure eight blob at the top left confuses me. It confuses me too. I don't know what that is, YYZ. I really don't. Um, I really don't know what it is. Oops, I don't know what I did there either. And I know you guys can't see it. What? How did that happen? How did I get a whole new thing? No, delete. There we go. Shh, shh, shh. Don't do it. Don't. Yeah, there's a couple of the, these figure eights. There's one up here. There's one down here. Um, there's at least, there's a ghost of one right here. I don't know what they are. I really don't. Um, 
and DPI says sensor blur after image internal reflection. I really don't. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. The only people I could think to ask that are also work used to working with um, used to working with layer adjustment layer curves. Um, are Dr. Feldmeyer and Dr. Durrell, but they don't, when I say ask them, they don't colorize images, but just because they don't colorize images doesn't mean that they don't know what they're looking at, if that makes sense, because they do often know what they're looking at. Is that the Owl Nebula? I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I find it interesting that when I hit alt to that you can see just all of the noise. Never thought to remove the noise first. That might actually be an option. Look at how, how noisy this image is. That might actually what I have to do for this one. Or that did it. I cut down on a lot of the noise. <laughs> Ernstra says, just upped my resolution on my phone. Lots of details suddenly. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Um, I would totally uh, stream this in output of eight, uh, 1080, but I know uh, Twitch doesn't always let people uh, turn down the resolution, but this, I feel like this is something that deserves to be in 1080. Yeah, here's some stitching artifacts here. But if I, you know, get rid of them that way, um, you lose a lot of detail, which is why I'm trying to be very careful about what I do. Because I don't, I actually don't want to lose a whole lot of detail in this one. So I'm angry that, all right, that'll work. Um, and usually to get rid of these artifacts, uh, the professionals actually go in and will very carefully Photoshop these artifacts out. They'll either use the cloning brush to, um, to just copy blank spaces of, you know, space. Um, they'll go and you know, just erase some of these marks. So yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. And like, I really don't want to lose a lot of that detail and I'm, I'm afraid to. I don't, I really don't want to lose the detail and I don't feel like it's so bad here that I can just do all that. Yeah, the clone tool is your friend. But I feel like if I try to get rid of all the dark here, this is more of a layer that needs... Um, oh, wait. Do I want to do that? No, that really didn't do anything. This is more of a layer that needs more of the uh, despeckling than it does of, I think, anything else. So I think we're just gonna, because it makes literally no difference in this particular layer. So I think we're just gonna skip the curves on this layer and just move on to the next layer. Hey, Zo. This one's not as bad. We'll probably still try it. Ansel. All right, so I want a new adjustment layer, curves. And we're just gonna do the, this is the bit that I want black thing. And I think that's all we're gonna do because now like the 
this is the same. Like, you can kind of tell, but it wasn't nearly as bad as, like, the red. It wasn't nearly as bad as, like, the red. So we'll leave that one alone. We'll turn on the blue. And the blue has a lot of stuff going on. So, layer. Come on. Adjustment layer. Curves. Use the previous layer's clipping mask. Do the auto adjustment. And... Nope, nope, nope. Cancel. Sample and image set black point. Uh, press Alt to display clipping preview. Oh, wow. There's something about this filter that picks up a whole lot of more of the background stuff. I feel like this is a very noisy image. There we go, that's better. I like that. I didn't realize that, you know, pressing Alt would give me a clipping preview, but this is, I feel like this is a good, you can see the structure. Let me adjust this. <laughs> And I think I'm impressed. I think we made it a whole stream without being interrupted by the cat. Yeah, the doggies are very noisy today. I think the dogs are making up for the fact that the cat's not around. They're like, oh, you know, mom's here. Alright, I like that one. You can see the structure. There's still a lot of noise. There's not... There's not too... Part of me is like, there's not too, too much I can do about the noise, but I know there's stuff I can do about the noise. So let's turn on all the layers now and see what we got. So the red is still very powerful. It's still overpowering everything. Um... Seen a lot of blue noise. This is Stefan's quintet. So I don't I don't know if the Owl Nebula is part of that or not. So this is what I mean by there's a lot of noise. But this also could be because I need to align the images. But I think the images are already aligned. And here's why I say I think the images are already aligned. Here's a star. This bright, these bright things right here, these are stars. And they're already all in the correct orientation. They stack beautifully on top of each other, which is why I'm saying a lot of this stuff is probably just background noise. Um, and when I zoom out, you can't see it, but when I zoom back in, um, you really can see it. Hello, Crispy Fried Man. And I think we did make the black a little bit blacker. I mean, we cut down on some of the thing. Let me just turn off all the curves so we can see uh, how much of a difference these the curves made. So this was before I added the curves, and like I said, the black, the black background wasn't as black. But the minute I started adding the curves. You know, the black background is indeed much more black. But now we can see all the noise. Um, if you squint just right, you can see where the seams are. I typically don't clean up the seams. Partially because it's time consuming. Partially because I'm much more interested in getting the images you know, colorized and making them look super pretty. So, 
Uh, Al Nebula is in Ursa Major, Stefan's Quintet is in Pegasus. So yeah, they're nowhere near each other. Um, but I feel like we, we hit our goal. I mean, there's some color now. Because before, we had no color. As a reminder, this is what it... Hold on. <coughs> that, that, that. have docked the lap dog. I should have docked the lap dog. So as a reminder, this is what we started with uh, today. And we added some color. So let me turn on the color for all the things. So we added color and then um, we just added some added some curves and we made the black look blacker which is the point and now we have a really kind of weird weirdly colored image that um, I might be able to change by being like well let's put the red on the bottom kind of thing um, yeah so hey Adam of Geekheim. I'm pretty much just wrapping up. I'm just looking at what I did. I, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again just because, you know, it is kind of cool to, to see what I started with versus what I ended with. So this is what I started with Adam. And I have, first we added color. And so that's what the, it looked like when we added color. Then I added curves. And that's what I finished with. So I'm mostly okay with this. Part of me is like, we could call this done. I don't like the colors on it. So I think next time I am going to tweak the colors a little bit and make it not so red. Because if we get rid of the red, um, like the red, I feel like the red just overpowers everything. It really does. Um, and I know it's just because it's the last layer on the stack. What actually happens if I... I mean, I can play with the opacity, but it's still... It's still not quite where I want it. So... Um, yeah, the red is very overpowering, but I think we're definitely at the point where I can flatten the image next week and then play with, once I flatten it, I'm not going to be able to tweak the ind individual layers anymore, which is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm also starting to think about my workflow a little bit and maybe I should start denoising when I pull all the images up into Photoshop to begin with maybe I should start um, doing the denoise thing then so the images aren't as noisy when I combine them together because I mean I can't do it right now um it's saving and this is a very large file oh thanks for the follow hey uh happito so here's the cheerios and make it rain so i'm actually just gonna flip over to the dogs and we'll chat for a bit um no uh kerbal i by stacking in photoshop uh i don't know what you mean by stacking are you talking like doing uh dynamic range 
things, um, I'm just going to flatten the image and um, mess with it from there. By stacking, what I mean by stacking is I open up all these images individually and then I um, turn each one of the images into a layer in this one final image and then I will flatten it. Oh, by, um, oh, you talking about layering a ton of exposures. I don't do that in, um, I don't do that in Photoshop. I don't mess around with too many exposures in Photoshop. <laughs> Part of me is like, I'm glad we know you, hi, because, because uh, Paranor can be uh, quite twitchy with that, uh, with that timeout button. So, um, I think I saw another question. So now is a good time for questions. So yeah, I've been well. Um, I'm finally back from traveling and all those other things. Um, it's been a busy month because I, I realized when I started that I have not worked on this image in a month between Bennu, between, um, my vacation in Vegas, between Tucson, between all the things like I have not worked on this image in a month and I know that when I don't work on images for a while I forget what I'm doing which is why I'm glad when I stopped the last time I color coded them is this is what goes with this color um I forget what I'm doing and sometimes I forget the whole process of how I should be doing it and because I only do this on stream I um it doesn't take a whole lot for me to forget what I'm doing so uh, Adam of Geekheim says it looks like a Lone Ranger mask in the bottom and you can't unsee it. So, uh, Adam is talking about this thing. Oh wait, my cursor isn't showing up, is it? Okay, so Adam's talking about this thing and this kind of, this one looks up here like it. And there's a ghost of one right here too, which is probably hard to see. So yeah, we don't know what they are. Um, So, oh, uh, Crispy Fried Man is asking, how do I choose music for the show? So I use Pretzel, which is a um, bot that literally, or it's a service that literally is like, here's all of the Twitch safe music. And there's an additional thing where I can say, I also want it to be YouTube safe. So I don't choose the music, I just go on to Pretzel and I choose a playlist. And the playlist I have is called Ambient Music. And um, because I'm logged in, A, you have to be logged in. And that's why it says occasionally, this is what's on the thing. Um, oh, it is, the Flat Earth is one of Sky Lewis's emotes. I thought I recognized that. Um, and if I don't like, the song on the ambient playlist, I give it a thumbs down and it never plays it again. So I like Pretzel Rocks because I have to put zero thought into what is playing and I know it's safe for both Twitch and YouTube. And when I'm working on stuff like this, you know, it's kind of nice to have some background music. So literally it is whatever is safe for both Twitch and YouTube, and it requires zero effort on my end other than logging into the website and hitting play. Um, it's nice to have some background music. So DPI says, Benu sucked the time out of all of us. Oh my goodness, did it ever. Did it ever. Um, I am just, I'm, Benu's done mostly for you guys. I don't know. Um, I don't know when phase two starts. I don't know when we're doing our big celebration stream. Um, I don't know a lot of things related to that, but I like the big push to get all the marking done for Bennu is done. Uh, speaking of, you know, the things that I'm doing right now related to Bennu are coming up with, um, SQL queries to check for, there's no dogs on camera. Why are there no dogs on camera? <coughs> to check for images that um, have no marks, which is kind of a thing. Um, I originally said that, oh, it'll, it, that may affect your final count. Da, 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 da. I don't think any of us care right now how much 
it affects your final count because as far as I can tell, nobody just sat there clicking image next like 50 times. So, and yes, I can tell when you do that. Um, I can't, um, there are things I can see and things I can't see. And sometimes I do these queries and uh, it, to me, sometimes the results don't make any sense, but I'll send the query that I did, or, you know, the, the magic words to do the query that I did to Dr. Pamela, and she'll do it, and she'll be like, oh, you found this, you found this, you found that, so, yay! I'm searching, I don't always know what I'm, like, I, I kind of know what I'm searching for, but I don't always know if I'm pulling up what I'm supposed to be pulling up. So right now I have a green post-it note, which is going to get blue screened out, green screened out. You have a green post-it note that's like, this is what I need to be working on. And it lives on the side of my monitor so I don't lose it. Cause other post-it notes just get like lost everywhere. Like this was some reading for Vegas that I never got around to downloading. Informal history of liquid rocket uh, propellants. So, yeah, her ear is, and I she won't let me call her over to fix her ear. And, um, yes, yes, Adam, I can magically summon puppers with Cheerios. I can't get Tinker to sit, though. I, the, I, she wants Cheerios, but she doesn't want Cheerios enough to sit for me on command. This is life being owned by Dashound. Um, and the other dog is literally just off camera. The doggy cam captures a very, very narrow bit. And it is indeed where my front door is. So that's why you see coats and belts hanging down. And Cheerios do often end up in pockets and in purses. I may have gone to Vegas and reached into my purse and pulled out Cheerios. My favorite human may have gone to work and pulled out Cheerios from his pocket. He may have found Cheerios on the floor at work and his workplace does not sell Cheerios. So yeah, um, Cheerios end up everywhere. Like, and there's a dog crate between me and uh, the dogs. So like, Cheerios end up on top of the dog crate. Have some Cheerios, Tinker. Cheerios end up under my desk, in my chair, on my desk. It's it's amazing. Um, sounds like a complete win to me. It's kind of funny. I am glad that Favorite Human is just like, there's some Cheerios. And yes, uh, because of how the camera is situated, she's kind of staring at me. She's actually not making eye contact because there's too much stuff uh, piled up on top of the dog, dog, uh, dog crate. But she is staring in my direction and the camera just happens to be in between, you know, her and, uh, her and me. So yeah, she, she, it looks like she's staring into the camera when she's really, are you sitting? You're not sitting. They need more light over there. I didn't turn on all the lights. But yeah, see, she's not, she's not even sitting. Let's see if I turn this one. Yeah, she's not even sitting. So... But yeah, that's, that's, those are my dogs. Those are my dogs. Um, da, 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 don't start. So yeah, um, Bennu, wh what's going on right now with Bennu is I'm collecting everybody that made the leaderboard. I have sent out emails. Everybody that made the leaderboard should have received an email. And there's a, ah. I know you're, you're upset. Have some Cheerios. Um, everybody that made the leaderboard should have received an email. Um, there's a couple people I've talked to individually because some people made multiple accounts to get Penu done, which I'm amused by. So, um, yeah, Kerbal, and I think you, you completed your, your thing. So if you made the leaderboard, you should have gotten an email from me. If I CC'd instead of BCC'd, I am so sorry. That was literally the last email I sent out, and um, I was tired. I may have done that in the middle of the night. Um, but yeah, the sooner everybody fills out those forms, the sooner we can get everything mailed. We have pretty much everything together to be mailed. Um, 
all the swag. I think we're still waiting on a couple t-shirts. But for the most part, um, for the most part, literally the sooner everybody gets their stuff, their form sent in, um, the sooner everything can happen. So Kerbal is asking, is there a model of Bennu that one can download and print themselves? So if you're talking like, I know I got all lizardy, skinny. I blame the camera. Let me, or I blame the light. Let me move. And then, then it's too dark. Well, there was an attempt. Why? Why are you doing this? You're going to end up in my lap. So now that my green screen's gone wonky because I'm trying to show off the little printed, 3D printed Bennu. So there are 3D printed Bennus. Um, the 3D printed Bennus were printed by uh, the 3D printing lab at PSI, it's Planetary Science Institute. And they, I know they did 30 of these at a time. They also printed a much, much, much larger one that has an actual stand that it fits very nicely into. And I think it depends on how big your printer is. Um, I might be able to get the file for this uh, little one. And yeah, these aren't, we, when I made the form, when I came up with all the things, um, there you go. Um, these aren't on the list, but I think for Superheroes and heroes, I because I don't know how many there are. Superheroes and heroes are probably getting one of these in their uh, packages, whether or not you requested one, because, you know, they're awesome. And I'm not sure what we're doing with the huge one. The huge one is awesome. And yes, asteroidmission.org is the official site for the Bennu mission. So, um, I just know my tiny little Bennu does not have nearly enough rocks and boulders on it. It, it really doesn't. Rocks for the rock counters. Yeah, pretty much. Um, we were just given a whole box of them at PSI, and then we were also given the very large one at, at the annual retreat, partly because of everybody's enthusiasm for like the lightning rounds and things of that nature, because uh, people were... Um, People, you guys kept showing there were a lot of you know lightning round talks about Bennu and oh wow two and a half foot model that's huge um, there were a lot of questions about Bennu and all this other stuff and a lot of enthusiasm about Bennu and the the PSI printing lab guys were like here have these rocks have these rocks so and the cat's awake um, yeah so that's how we ended up with a whole bunch of little Bennu's. So that's what's going on with Bennu. Um, forms, getting things ready to, to uh, be shipped. I don't know about phase two. I don't know about the big celebration stream. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there. And I know there's going to be a big celebration stream in December? Is it this December or next December? I don't know. But I think there's going to be a celebration stream in December because I know Dr. Pamela wanted me to hold on to my Japanese beer for that long. But I have already forgotten what it was for. Probably the Hayabusa mission. Um, but yeah, we the best way to get updates is to be on Discord. I am more active on Discord than I am on Slack. And to be fully a member on Discord, you do need to agree to the rules. It's easy, you just go to rules and info channel, read the rules, follow, you know, read the instructions, go back to the welcome channel, and you know, type the command in there, and boom. If you type anything remotely that remotely looks like the command, um, I will just If you type anything that looks remotely like the command, I will manually approve it once I see it. And I think that's all, really. I feel like I'm just rambling on. And uh, yeah, so that's all the things that are going on. That's all the updates. Um, 
Dr. Pamela will do daily space for you tomorrow. We're doing the podcast. So starting, it started last week, but starting this week, for me, I will be doing a clean recording of my daily space after, you know, I do the daily space. So there won't be dog interruptions. There won't be cat interruptions. There won't be, you know, random me answering questions and things of that nature during the actual recorded podcast. So, um, the yeah, Paranor says editing. No, what I am literally going to do is I am literally going to record it twice. Or I don't record while I stream. Um, I am literally going to redo everything and hope my dogs don't bark while I'm doing it. It, it, it's it's a thing. It happens. <sighs> so, yeah. Yeah, ADR style. Yeah, I don't know what ADR means, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be... Instead of trying to change how I do things for daily space and making it more like... Um, making it more like a talk show format on Twitch. I'm going to keep the same interaction I have with y'all on Twitch and then re-record later. So, when it's actually faster to redo than cutting every noise out, yes, it is actually going to be faster to just reread everything I say than try to get the dogs under control. <sighs> I love my dogs. I love my cat, but you know, the cat is just very cat-like. Um, a lot of movies do ADR just to save time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, additional dialogue recording is, is totally a thing. So, oh. <sighs> so, for a transcript of today's show, write down everything you hear, pretty much. Um, for transcripts, I've thought about doing um, the auto transcript or the auto closed caption thing, um, but how I have all my audio set up, I don't know if I can also make it work correctly. So I keep meaning to try and I keep, it just keep, keeps not working out. Plus Dr. Pamela and I are trying to get our things to look kind of uniform and um, things of that nature. Gooseman's add-on. No, this was a whole different, it's like a... Yes, with voice meter, I should be able to select the mic channel alone. Um, but it's a website that works with Chrome that where you have to select the microphone and um, it doesn't always let me select the microphone. So there's that, there's that. Um, I can't remember, like I've, I know I've used it to help me create transcripts for the video I made a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago. It was a long time ago, let's be honest. It was spring, it's now fall. Um, and it works, it does, it's not perfect, but um, it works, so. We'll see. We'll see. I'll figure something out. But uh, yeah, now I, I really do feel like I'm just rambling on. So I think I've given you guys all the updates. Um, I have not had coffee. There is no coffee in the house, so I'm fading fast. <sighs> oof, oof, oof. Yeah, yeah, I need to make coffee. It's intelligent rambling. Well, I'm glad it's intelligent rambling. So here's why there's no coffee in the house. It's not because I don't have coffee. It's because I haven't ground the coffee beans. Because <laughs> I use a manual grinder now and it takes forever. And I'm whiny about it, apparently. Um, I'm, I'm whiny about it, apparently. So. It's pretty bad when you're like, I need to make more coffee. 
and he said for like half a week you need to make more coffee. I got a 30 ounce can from the commissary for $5, but I'm a coffee snob, that's the problem. That's the problem. I am a coffee snob, Kerbal. Um, I'm a coffee snob. Like, oh, Coffee KX is like, yeah, yeah, Coffee KX knows what I'm talking about. Um, I buy whole, I buy whole beans. <laughs> I grind them right before I brew them. And my defense of, uh, in, in my defense, I only have to grind beans once a week. And I have a manual grinder now that's a, that's a, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the correct kind of grinder. It's not the, the one where it just turns it into powder. And, um, my defense is, is I don't want to grind beans once a week. I have no reason to, to whine about it. Um, but the manual grinder, I think it's called a burr grinder. I think the manual burr grinder was much more, uh, affordable than like an electric grinder because the other grinder I had before literally cannibalized itself. And now everything is going off. Why is everything going off? Um, oh, okay. Thank you, DPI, for sending me that. So. <sighs> okay. Probably the fourth time. And the dogs are looking at me like, where are my Cheerios? Have some Cheerios. All right. I'm almost out of Cheerios. I'm done rambling on. And yeah, things and stuff. I have to get ready for a birthday party later today. I have no idea what I'm giving this child. Fun. So, anyways, uh, we normally stream Sundays through Fridays. Actually, I should back up. This has been Science Sunday with me, Annie Wilson, your host, along with, um, you know, Tinker and Puck, and amazingly no cat. Uh, we stream, Cosmo Quest streams, every Sunday through Friday. We do not stream on Saturdays unless it's something really special. And grind those beans. <laughs> I will. I will. Why, why is that? Um, yeah, see? I need more coffee. So we stream every Sunday through Friday. Uh, Monday through Fridays is daily space. Uh, essentially your daily space and astronomy news update. And Sunday is this. Science Sunday. Wednesdays, I usually talk about what's launched, what's going to launch, and what else is going on spacecraft-wise in space. You know, and the occasional space toilet update. Oh, thank you for the follow! I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you for the follow! <coughs> See? <coughs> Tanner's even hype. And make it rain! And, uh... Oh, thank you for following. Look, more now I'm out of Cheerios. It's official. I'm I'm done. I'm out of Cheerios in the container. I have more Cheerios, don't worry. And speak. Oh, uh, Tinker says thank you. Puck says thank you. I say thank you. I am staring at all the Cheerios that are stuck on coats. Um, thank you for the follows. I, I appreciate it. So uh we are brought to you by you. Literally, we um I am paid by donations and subs and bits and all those other wonderful things. If uh, you can't afford to support us financially, that's okay. Uh, follows are free and follows still get the dog's Cheerios. You can also inflict us on other humans in your life. You don't even have to like those humans, just inflict us on them. Um, no, that's me, Puck. It's, it's me. It's me. It's me tapping my fingers on the desk because I'm thinking. And because my brain is not working as fast as my mouth is. Uh, we archive pretty much everything on YouTube. So if you miss a stream, if you miss a video on demand, check out YouTube. Uh, Susie's pretty awesome about getting everything up there as fast as she can. And yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, our host institution is PSI. It's Planetary Science Institute in Tucson, Arizona, where I am indeed convinced that there are two suns. And I think I left my parasol there. Working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown, 
I think it's decent outside. I don't want to check the Daystar is bright, Ohio. And yeah, uh, PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation, which is fancy talk for your donations are tax deductible where laws allow. <sighs> and Orange just like, no, not the parasol. Yeah, I still have to contact. Uh, I still have to contact the person whose car I think I left it in. YYZ asks, is Annie a vampire? Cool, if so, just asking. I am not a vampire. I just... I appreciate my... I appreciate all the damage that the sun can do to my skin, and I try to avoid the sun. That, that's it. That's I have a parasol, and I have fancy Japanese sunscreen, uh, which I would show you, but I don't know where it is on my desk right now. My desk is a mess. Um... <laughs> and yes, as Arnstro says, I am not quite sparkly enough, and Arnstro has seen me in the sun. Um, yeah. I think I lost my track. Anyways, I think it's time to uh, roll the credits and all those other fun things. So keep on keeping on, keep being awesome, have a wonderful. Uh, insert time of day here wherever you are in the world and yeah things and stuff stuff and things I will see you Wednesday unless there's a launch which there is a launch in two days so I guess I will see you on Tuesday but yeah until then keep being awesome and all those other wonderful fun things and I will see you eventually bye